topic I'll be going over today is performance testing in ice hockey. My name is Ian McNeil. I chose to do performance testing in ice hockey because I'm a Canadian born citizen and here ice hockey is extremely popular. So first we'll be going over what is ice hockey, a brief discussion on the equipment, uh, the different playing positions and the ice surface and arena, you know, a brief review of the of the physiological demands, followed by anthropometric testing, on ice testing, off ice testing, and finally a conclusion on this proposed testing battery. As the name implies, ice hockey is played on an ice surface. Players wear boots that are laced up around their feet and ankles. On the bottom of these boots, is a blade 50 centimeters long and one and a half one to one and a half millimeters wide on the bottom with these skates and the physical characteristics of the players they can reach speeds of up to 48 kilometers per hour uh, the game of ice hockey is played with what is called a puck which is vulcanized rubber uh, it's very light at six ounces and is three inches by one inch in diameter. This puck can travel up to 161 kilometers per hour when hit with a hockey stick. The hockey stick is made of carbon graphite, can be anywhere from 150 centimeters to 200 centimeters. This is depending on the height of the player and preference. The blade at the bottom, which is used to hit the puck, can be 25 to 40 centimeters long. The size of the rink depends on the area that you are in the world. So in North America, it's a 1,560 meters squared, and in Europe, it's 1,800 meters squared. Right here, it shows the defending zone, the neutral zone, and the attacking zone. In the defending zone, that was where your goaltender would be. And in the attacking zone, that's where the opposition goaltender would be. Surrounding the ice surface, there's a row of boards all around. These boards can be used to hit opponents into, to strategically place the puck along the boards, and to make sure players and the puck stay within the playing area. So here's a quick video demonstrating how the boards can be useful. There's a bounce off the boards there, right in front, and the goalie can stand a chance. So there's three uh, positions for ice hockey players to play. The main task for the forwards is to score goals by putting the puck in the net with their stick. Um, they pr also provide offense in the offensive zone. As you can see in the picture here, the forward is attempting to bring the puck in front of the net to get a shot on goal and hopefully pass the goaltender. Defensemen assist the goaltender in preventing goals. They clear forwards from in front of the net and they clear the puck from the defensive zone. Um, in this picture here we have a couple of defensemen uh, lining up to get in the way of the puck which is being shot right there. And then the goaltenders are uh, there to stop the puck from going in the net. Um, they won't be examined in this presentation as they have a very, very uh, unique set of gear and a set of rules that apply to them. When looking at measures of success in ice hockey, there's two big ones that really stand out. The National Hockey League is regarded as the highest level of ice hockey, uh, the highest professional level of ice hockey in the world. Um, the winner of that, of the 30, 31 teams at the end of the year, will win the Stanley Cup, as seen above. And the other big measure of success would be the Olympics. So the Olympics are every four years. 
Um, it, the Olympics no longer include uh, NHL players. This past Winter Olympics in 2018, they decided just to use amateur players. But in the pictures here, we can see uh, fellow Canadian and Nova Scotia native Sidney Crosby holding the Stanley Cup and scoring the uh, golden goal to win in overtime against the States in 2010 in Vancouver. Performance testing is useful to a sports scientist or strength and conditioning coach. It provides baseline data when looking at a team or looking at the individual. This can be either compared to other teams of the past or compared to other individuals on the team. Performance testing can be used for monitoring to see whether players are properly recovering or if they're over fatigued. They, it can also be used to look at the training program and provide an evaluation to see if the players and the team are improving in the performance tests or if they aren't improving and something needs to change. Ice hockey is a high intensity intermittent sport. Montgomery in 88 mentioned that aerobic endurance, anaerobic power, and endurance, muscular strength, and skating speed are uh, important characteristics. And then Twist and Rhodes in 93 suggested that flexibility and agility must also be added to this list. A developed aerobic system is necessary for ice hockey players because their recovery in between shifts will always be aerobic. Um, a recommended VO2 max is listed and a developed anaerobic system is necessary for the energy during a shift. Forwards and defensemen can play shifts from anywhere from 30 seconds to 80 seconds and then with four to five minutes of rest in between. <coughs> For the testing battery now, first thing that should be done should be the anthropometric testing. Um, the height is used measuring a steadiometer to the 0 0.5 centimeter. Weight should be used with an electronic scale measured to the 0 0.1 uh, kilogram. Body fat percentage should be used with a skinfold caliber and it should be used measuring the sum of seven skinfolds listed. Anthropometrics should be done before breakfast after the bowels have been voided. Um, this protocol should be maintained to keep reliability. Um, and the Jackson and Pollock equation from 78 should be used due to hockey players being athletes. The on-ice testing should be done in full gear with hockey stick. Um, five minutes skating warm-up should be done. Um, the four on-ice tests that we are looking at are the 6.1 meter sprint look at acceleration, the 35 meter sprint to look at speed, the cornering S test to look at change of direction. Between each trial of these tests, five minutes will be provided for rest for a full recovery. And then the final on ice test will be the 3015 intermittent ice test to look at the aerobic power. It should be noted in the picture here that the timing gates are positioned relatively high. Uh, it should be noted that the timing stops when the player's front skate crosses the line. So if the gates are too high or too low, the player's stick could interfere with the timing gate, giving them a uh, faster time than what they would have skated. So diving deeper into the two on ice speed tests, um, two to three attempts will be given to skate from cone to cone as fast as possible. Um, as you can see in the picture here, the cones are set up for the acceleration, 6.1 meter. Photo cells are positioned at the first test, or the first cone, sorry, and at the second cone. Again, the timing starts and stops as soon as the 
player's skate crosses the line. It is known as that players should start parallel to the start line. Um, the 6.1 meter test provides an inner class R of 0 0.8. Um, all these on ice testing should be done with photo cells. Moyer et al. in 2004 stated that photo cells are highly reliable for sprint performance. And then the 35 meter on ice test looking at speed interclass R of 0 0.98. Um, it should be noted that both tests could be done in the same uh, trial. And you could obtain a 6.1 meter split and a 35 meter split, similar to doing a 10 meter and a 20 meter. This will save time on the ice and decrease trials. So instead of doing three 6.1 meter excels and three 35 meter tests for six trials total, three total attempts could be done. The cornering. S drill will be two trials also, so the uh, player will start behind the net where the photo cell is. They'll start, they'll skate up as fast as they can around the left circle, coming back down, avoiding the cone in front of the crease, and then up around the right cone here to the second photo cell. In the past, this has been stated as an agility drill. However, this is not the case because there's no decision-making task. The drill is pre-planned, uh, and an inner class R of 0 0.95 was found. The 3015 intermittent ice test consists of 30-second shuttle skates of 40 meters, interspread with 15 seconds of passive recovery. Participants are required to keep up with an audible signal and are classified as finished when they fail to maintain the required sp skating speed. Um, that is that they don't meet the required distance by the audio signal on three consecutive occasions. The first off-ice test uh, examined is the vertical jump. The vertical jump will be performed on a jump mat. The jump mat measures the vertical displacement. Um, the R correlation to criterion is uh, 0 0.967 with a male interclass correlation and female interclass correlation of 0 0.84 and 0 0.94 respectively. The individual is given three trials to jump as high as possible. It should be noted that if the a uh, tester or sports scientist or strength and conditioning coach chooses to do squat jumps, they must retest with squat jumps. Or if they choose to do counter movement jumps, they must retest with counter movement jumps. Um, anaerobic power can be assessed from the vertical displacement using a formula. Um, Burr et al. found that squat jump and counter movement jump were both related to draft status in the NHL. However, vertical jump uh, is met with mixed correlations with skating speed. Bracco et al. and Blem et al. found that vertical jump had no correlation with skating speed, but Farlinger et al. found that vertical jump did, however, have a correlation with skating speed. Further research must be done. Um, for our off-ice weight room testing, a one-hour-round front squat to examine lower body strength uh, is our protocol. Uh, this may or may not be related to skating speed. Uh, lower body strength is important in decreasing injury rates, and it is highlighted as an important factor by twists and roads in 93, that is lower body strength. Um, one RM bench press will be used to assess upper body strength. Upper body strength has been related to shooting one-on-one -on -one confrontations along the boards in the corners and open ice, and also important in decreasing injury rates. For the uh, warm-up protocol and uh, one RM protocol, a full dynamic warm-up will be done. Ten reps at 50%, five at 70%, three at 80, one at 90, and then three to five one-arm attempts 
with three to five minutes of rest in between attempts. If a participant or individual does not know what their 1RM is, they can use 50, 70, 80, and 90 as a, a feel measure versus a true measure. This testing battery assesses the physiological characteristics highlighted by Montgomery and Twist and Rhodes. However, Twist and Rhodes did mention that agility is a uh, important characteristic for ice hockey players. This testing battery has no uh, proper agility testing, um, so that leaves us with agility as an is an area of further research. Um, some on ice decision making drills should be incorporated whether those are domain specific having a player react to another player or a video of another player or using an led light stimulus to have the player react and change directions Bat this ba testing battery can be used to measure changes in strength upper and lower in body composition in skating ability and looking at the lower body anaerobic power. Uh, one issue that may be with this testing battery is uh, based with time constraints. <coughs> if the testing battery can only be issued on one day, then the 3015 intermittent ice test may affect the off ice test of vertical jump 1RM front squat and bench press. Typically the aerobic test or more fatiguing test will be done at the end. However, with this test being on ice, it's very tedious and will take a lot of time. If the individuals have to do the first three on ice tests, the 6.1 meter sprint, 35 meter sprint, cornering uh, S drill, then go off the ice, do vertical jump, one arm front squat, one arm bench press, and then go back on the ice to do the 30-15 intermittent ice test. So a proposed testing battery to uh, per, for the one day would be anthropometrics followed by vertical jump, followed by the on ice testing, giving them a break in between on ice testing and the one arm testing. But a two day testing battery should be uh, superior, um, allowing enough rest in between the on ice testing and the vertical jump and 1RM testing on day two. And this concludes my presentation on performance testing in ice hockey. Thank you.